This is about a 47 year old gentleman having intermittent headache on and off for few months much more and severe for a week. CT brain was done before and after IV contrast. Please go through the images and give the findings and the diagnosis. If you want more time please pause the video and review again. Within few seconds I will give you the findings and discuss the differential diagnosis and the final diagnosis. Are you ready? Let's go. Plain CT shows ovoid hypertense lesion in the lateral half of right temporal lobe. After IV contrast, this turned out to be a large vascular lake with mild perilateral edema around it. More prominent right sigmoid and transverse sinuses are also noted. In addition, multiple vascular collaterals are seen diffusely in the supratentorial and infratentorial brain, more pronounced in the right cerebral hemisphere. There is no evidence of mass effect or midline shift. No such vascular connections detected in the circle of fillies. MCAs and basilar artery are visualized. Thalamae, basal ganglia and brainstem appear unremarkable. The differential diagnosis are 1. Multiple arteriovenous malformations. 2. Is cerebral vascular angiomatosis and rarely Moya Moya disease. Patient underwent MRI brain and DSA and the findings remain the same as already described. No therapeutic intervention done at that time. After discussing with the neurologist and the interventionist, we came to the conclusion of the final diagnosis of either cerebral proliferative angiopathy or cerebral vascular angiomatosis or diffuse AVM. In discussion, the associated syndromes with multiple AVMs or craniocerebral angiomas are 1. Sturge Weber Dimitri syndrome, 2. Hereditary hemorrhagic lungectasia or Osler Weber Rendu syndrome, third one is Weber Mason syndrome, fourth one impel Lindau disease, fifth is Klippel Trinoni Weber syndrome, sixth is angiomatosis of Divry van Bogue syndrome. When there are multiple arteriovenous connections due to multiple dominant arterial feeders and draining veins with or without well defined nidus angiographically, then we can call it as diffuse AVM or cerebral vascular angiomatosis. But when there are multiple arteriovenous connections due to multiple non dominant arterial feeders and draining veins associated with intermingled normal brain, then we can call it as cerebral proliferative angiopathy. There will be no typical nidus angiographically. See the image for the differences between the classical cerebral AVM and the cerebral proliferative angiopathy. Cerebral proliferative angiopathy is very rare, slightly more common in females. There is less incidence of intracranial hemorrhage at presentation. Might not have typical nidus but can have non-dominant feeders and have more collaterals from many parts of cerebral hemisphere with delayed transit time. The patient was managed conservatively for one year and then lost follow-up. That's end of the session. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Please share this with your medical groups and with your neurological and radiological residents. Give your valuable comments, suggestions and feedback. Thank you again.